Okay, back in um, 1993, um, increasingly when the MPY Women's Council held their executive meetings, the women raised the issues about violence against women and particularly the poor response from the criminal justice system and they were really dissatisfied about the kinds of jail sentences, very low sentences that offenders were getting. So that was the begin beginning of it. Um, I travelled to Sydney in 2003 with two of the senior women from the MPY Women's Council, both sadly deceased, and we attended one of the first um, domestic violence conferences in New South Wales. And that really kind of inspired us to then try and do something ourselves. So in April 1994, the service began, um, and its objective really was to um, improve the kinds of protection and safety you know through the criminal justice system through policing that women in the cross-border region could receive. Okay to begin with in 1994 there was myself appointed as the coordinator and a project officer Kunbri Pipai and so we based or began the project down at Murujuru which is where Kunbri lived and there are a number of other senior women um, who are executive members of the Women's Council have been proactively involved who were really supportive of this service and it was very important that the service was grounded in that way and that it had their support and authority because what we were doing was quite um, controversial and, and challenging. Um, there was a lot of resistance um, from both Indigenous men and in some cases non-Indigenous men who would say, well, you know, restraining orders only work for white women, they're not for Indigenous women. Um, Aboriginal women won't go to court, they don't want to testify. And we soon found that that wasn't so, that once we could provide some practical support so that women could attend court, police became a lot more supportive of the work we were doing and they could see some of the results. Um, women started to approach us and say, well, I want what that woman's got, meaning, you know, I want a restraining order too. Um, and so by focusing in on one community, being very hands-on and practical and following through um, and engaging very closely with police to get um, their confidence, but also the confidence of the women that they could actually go to police and make a report. That was really how we began and those things were very important. It was very important to tailor the kinds of responses and service so that we didn't set the women up to fail and also we didn't set their partners and offenders up to fail either, you know. I mean, it was about giving them a chance to try and change their behaviour. I've often been asked about how successful the service has been and um, whether it's been successful in stopping the violence. Um, no, the, I think it's been successful in making a lot of women much safer. I think it's been really effective and successful in raising the issue. I think it's been really effective in improving the way that police respond in the area and the way that um, Aboriginal women will engage with the criminal justice system. As police officers, our, our role is varied. Obviously, part of that role is to look after victims and ensure that victims are safe. But primarily, we're about uh, identifying and prosecuting offenders. What that means sometimes is that victims are probably not really appropriately uh, provided support because of that role. And that's where Women's Council really steps up. Obviously, a very victim focused role in the domestic violence unit um, and we've had some really good working relationships with the DV unit in terms of tackling DV incidents holistically. So the police are there are looking after the prosecution side of things and the women's councils there looking after the victim side of things. Ultimately we want women and children to be safe in the lands, that's what we're here for and that's why we also work with DCP uh, to ensure safety of children. So we really couldn't do our job if we didn't have Women's Council out here supporting us and, um, and, in, and guiding us and informing us too. We have a very close working relationship and information exchange uh, because obviously we all need to know what's going on for families so that we can actually work together as a team to help those families live better and safer lives out here. So um, I'm really happy to be part of that. I think it's uh, something that's working well, uh, has always worked well in my experience and will continue to work well into the future.
The first thing I heard about the Empire Women's Camps of Domestic Violence was when the priest, priest, priest told me about it here in Warakuna. And it was really hard for me. Hard, but I've been always trying to get the police to help me because of my, my violent relationship. And when I went to Chukula, and the only thing I could think of is I should bring the woman council so the woman council could help me, so they did. Um, I had to get out from the community, go into Alice Springs. And I felt really secure thinking, Koli and the Nai, we are, this is really helpful. You know, when you ask, they, they don't ask you why and all that. They know when a woman needs to get out, they do it quick, help me go by So I was really happy about it. It, it gave me more freedom and more of having my own private time and do my work wherever I feel like going, whenever I want to like go somewhere. I just have to pick my bag and my blanket and go. It was like getting a burden out of my back, carrying something that weren't never easy. It was really hard, hard for me. So when I started, Woman Council started helping me, and like they took the burden out of my never burden and all that, and and now I feel that I've got nothing to watch over my shoulder now, waiting for an eagle to attack me. Yeah, it's different now. I've got more freedom. We don't need, we don't need people to be scared, because there's women council there, there's women there that support him and by. And we need to help family and Didi, kids and all. So they could have their freedom. In NPY Women's Council, now you could story this one. And they helped, helped me through. And NPY Women's Council are there to help anyone, including my, my Yundalpa. I keep talking to my daughter. I keep talking to my Kata saying that domestic violence can't tolerate on that. It's it's really hurtful and it's someone else's city that you are doing bad things to. So everyone needs to understand, even the families that talk up for their sons, they need to understand it. Someone else's children are getting hurt and they need to stand up and say, don't, don't do that, Wanti. Don't do that, something else will happen and I will, we will get the blame, we will get hurt. Women cancelled though. They did so much and now it's getting lesser and lesser, lesser. And now that we've got the police in the lands, it's easier, but we still need Women's to understand behind closed doors don't know what's happening and they need to do something behind closed doors. The woman that he, she has to come out and say, I had enough, I had enough of this. If I love, I think I'll walk away, away and go to my family. You are women's, woman cancel is. You know, really helpful.
First of all, it was extremely courageous for those women leaders to take the initiative to speak publicly about violence against women and to establish a service to deal specifically with this problem. So we were beginning to notice 20 years ago and perhaps 30 years ago how uh, high the rates of violence against women were climbing. I mean in parts of the Northern Territory now it's up to 40 times greater and in some places 80 times greater. But nevertheless a group of women, Anangu women, faced the public opprobrium of a community that could not admit this dreadful rate of crime and violence against women. It became very clear that the most significant crime in uh, the Northern Territory was violence against women and even the uh, police commissioner and deputy police commissioners recognised this. However, most of the community refused to acknowledge that this was a problem and it was regarded uh, as a matter about which no one should speak publicly and so it was a public secret. It was impossible to ignore because women were walking down the street injured, bleeding, in bandages, uh, the hospitalisation rates were astonishing and, and appalling. So what the NPY Women's Council um, is able to uh, demonstrate is that by returning um, cultural authority and decision making to the community and enabling the NPY Women's Council to lead local governance, design and implementation of programs, there will be much better outcomes. What drives me every day is that I will, in my lifetime, uh, or one day this service will experience, uh, the doors of our domestic and family violence service being closed and never opening again. This is a very ambitious and necessarily long-term ambition, uh, but I believe that is possible, and I believe that it can be done if Women's Council, its members, its friends, its partners, as well as organisations working across numbers of sectors, if we all work together to achieve this goal. I recently read that in Australia, a woman is uh, is killed every seven days as a result of domestic and family violence. Every death of a, of a woman through domestic and family violence is one death too many. And in our region, we have seen women who have died. But there is also a building optimism and a positive uh, generation of workers who can really genuinely see that we can turn this around and that our communities can live free of violence. Mm. The future is bright and I believe with uh, such really innovative approaches such as the cross-border justice legislation and the, the approaches that uh, Women's Council and its partners have activated such as memorandums of understanding and the way that we are working together towards this long-term goal of, of absolutely reducing violence against women and closing the door to NPY Women's Councils domestic and family violence service will be achieved.